So this is a very special occasion, especially for all of you out there. I have been with the Lord since early this morning about what do you see when you look into the manger. Now, what do you see when you look into the manger? This is Pastor Teacher Judy Carney from Spirit of Death Ministry. Take a good look and remember, you think in your mind, what do you see when you look at the baby Jesus in the manger? What do you really see? Have you seen the Lord Jesus Christ as a baby that just came in the world to be a, a good person? Or have you seen him as the Son of God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Do you look and see him as the one who made a pathway, just like I've shown you on there, made a pathway, which I've sprinkled with sparkling, but the pathway is the blood of Jesus to bring you. He brought you that. You walk up that pathway right into the blood of Jesus by him saying, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, you're saved. But then the sparkles that came on it, I put them on there to show that the Holy Ghost is our teacher. And he comes into us through Jesus is coming. He comes in. Jesus said he was going to go and send us another. That's what he did. We're lit up on that pathway by the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost and the true word of God, which says he came that we might have what he fit by the Father sent us as our gift, a gift of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He isn't just a babe sitting there. He is the Son of God. He is the one that says, I am God Almighty. I am come from my Father. My Father and I are one. Do you realize that when you look in the manger, you shouldn't see a baby that was crucified. That came later. You should see a baby that gave us a gift, a gift of salvation, a gift of love, a gift of joy, a gift of self, of saving the people that are lost, a gift of going out and reaching a lot. He gave us a gift of happiness. He gave us the gift of looking into that heart and seeing we can have the heart of God. He said, take upon you the mind of Christ. Look into the manger. He made it possible. He came there. He was there. It wasn't a fancy place to be born. He was born in a humble place. You should humble yourselves out there. I'm telling you, you pastors and your teachers and things, they're not teaching the full manger scene. He came to make us free. He came that we might have heaven. He came that we may not have to worry about where are we going to go. You're... I would say the people out there that are teaching a lukewarm condition, you people out there, you're in different churches, different denominations, but it's a lukewarm condition, not rapture material. Look into the manger. I see a baby that died, but he said, I'm coming back again. I look into the scene, and I see a lot of things in this manger scene the Lord gave me. We took that apart three times, my secretary and I, before we would get what God wanted. We started out in a different road. We had Jesus in a different place on that in the, in the center here. He wasn't there. He was on the side. Who wanted a sideways road? He wanted a road going right to him. He wanted a pathway. He wanted us to see, I came for the reason that I can give you my salvation and send you the power of the Holy Ghost, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that's going to come and fight the battle of Armageddon and slay those that won't believe. I'm telling you, preachers, and that you're preparing people not to get out of here, but you're going to be, leave, to be left when Jesus comes back. He told me today, he said, it is not, an, it is not, I am coming soon any longer. He says, I am coming with rapid speed. You know what rapid speed is? Like a bull of lightning. He's coming. He's coming so soon. You're not going to have time to come out. You better repent before God if you're not telling your people the truth. You better not, you better, you better take a look into the manger with pastor today. Teacher, I came here. I didn't plan this block for me, but I was up this morning and I've been in the anointing for many hours. And he told me to tell those people that they better teach the truth because I come quickly. No, he didn't. He said, I come with rapid speed. Tell them to change their thoughts, to get their mindset on who I am. Get a mindset on who I am and quit worrying about your problems there, worrying about your wrapping and papers and getting things all right. These children of today, I feel sorry for them. They see a Santa Claus, a little fat-bellied man who has taken the whole Christmas scene away from my Jesus. And I do not approve of all that. Those children have not known. They think Santa Claus is going to bring you something. God of the mighty sent us the gift of all gifts, his son. They should have been taught that from the very beginning in these churches. We have failed. We have failed our Lord and God. We failed the gift of salvation. We have failed the gift that our Father sent us. The best gift and the only gift, the most wonderful, magnificent gift that anybody could give. His only son. Do you realize how he hurts when he sees what's going on? A little fat, jolly elf who's supposed to be bringing the thing to their kid because you never tell them. We do this just because Jesus came and he's our gift. 
They don't know why that we give gifts. They think it's because Santa Claus brings them. So what does Santa Claus have to do with my salvation? What does Santa Claus have to do with the things that he gave me? What does Santa Claus have to do when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? He came to bring us the Christ, the very Christ, the Son of God. I may not even get into the teaching that I might have to do next week, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you what I've been anointed to tell you. He sent me. I'm, all, I'm Like I told you, I'm 84. He brought me out of the fact that I had this arm broken. It was smashed up really bad. It was it was to the point where the doctor wanted to cut my, cut my shoulder off to here and up to here in order to do anything for me. That's what the doctor could offer me. But my doctor, Jesus, said, no, I've got better for you, Pastor. I've got something because you're going to take this to the world. I'm keeping you alive and healthy. I'm keeping you. I can jump up and down. I can walk. I can breathe. I can read my arms. I can do whatever. Because my Jesus can't even tell. He made, it to, he made a miracle. They can't even find on the x-rays where that was hurt. When God does something, he does it for a reason. I had a fall, and it was because of one thing for God to get the glory out of it. I didn't say when I got saved, I'll just do easy things. It wasn't easy to go to the hospital. It wasn't easy to have those doctors tell me they might have to cut this off and put a metal in there, that it would be for four to eight or more hours on me. And my precious doctor, he knew I didn't want that. He's seen other miracles that God did in my body. I wait on God. I had to go and I had to have x-rays. I had to go to the hospital. But I'm telling you people, my God still healed. He's the one you see in the manger. The blood of Jesus healed. The blood of Jesus raises you from the, de the dead into the heavenly. Not going to hell. Who wants to go and follow these dead churches and make it? If you're left behind, you're going to go through something you're not going to want when Jesus comes back for the second time. My little choir boys that are singing up on that top shelf, I've got the, the cross up there and four little choir boys they are looking up. I've had them for years. And then last night he had my my secretary, Jan, and I, we found a place that he wanted them. Finally, they found their home. They're looking up. They're singing the praises that the angels sang when they were here. They're praising the fact that Jesus came. They're praising the fact that they have the glory of God to sing about because they're going to be raptured and they're going to go back. What does rapture mean? A piece of ecstasy to be taken out, to be picked up and taken out in a, in a moment and a twinkling of an eye, those that are ready. He said, be without spot, wrinkle, any such thing. You pastors are doing your people wrong. You teachers are doing your people wrong. Stop and think about it. You're responsible. You expect to make the rapture when you're not telling them that they have to have the Holy Ghost and this the Holy Ghost is going to change you? Come on, get real. Get real. I'm not angry at, at anything except the devil who makes my wonderful pastors and my precious men of God and ladies of God that want to do right, get their minds twisted into deceit. And I'm telling you, men and God, men and women, deceit brings defeat. And you'll be defeated in your very action. You'll be left behind if you don't get right with it and start teaching. Thus, they the Lord out of the full gospel, not out of what you think, out of God's holy word. Quit stopping by denominational background. Quit stopping what they say you can do. Say what God says you should do. One of my favorite sayings is, I don't want what man says, I want what God says. No man can tell me I've got the word that was left. Jesus came that we might have the truth. I want the truth, the truth, the truth. And I teach the truth. I want to hear from a lot of you, and I hope you pastors and that burn in your things and that you think about this and stop procrastinating and putting off the truth. Give your people what God wants them to have. Help get America ready. They backslidden because of the people, the churches that are teaching false doctrine. Untruth, lies to get people to come in to have more money. Keep the building going. So what the building under you're going to get that building to take you out of here? You're going to get that man to say, I'll hold you by hand. That man probably isn't even going to make it if he's not telling you the whole truth. They might say rapture. They might say, I'm going to make. Be careful, children. Be careful. It isn't going to be that easy, saith the Lord. It's going to be what I want, saith the Lord. I didn't send my son to have people procrastinate and to decide what they want. I sent my son to do what he said, follow thou me. Children, this is the time. I'm not even going to bring you the teaching I had you, but it's, a, it's a, what did you see when you looked into the manger? I'll tell you what I saw through the Spirit. Then we'll go on from there. This will be continued at another time. It'll be continued at a time after you pastors can sit down and think about what I'm telling you. You can sit down and think, do I want my people to make it or do I want to sit here with them after the, the rapture comes, after the bride of Christ is taken out? How am I going to face them in church when they come in and want to tear me apart? Because I didn't give them the truth. 
You better, you better think about this. Don't you procrastinate, you men and women of God. Stop it. Stop it. Get real. Look at God and say, I want to be real this time, Lord. I want to be real. I want to help the people. You don't love them. If you love them, you'd give them the truth. You, don't, you give them doctrine. You give them what's going to bring them back. You tickle their ears. My ears don't need to be tickled. I want them to be hearing the things of God that comes into them so I can tell the things of God to you people. I've been like this all since early this morning. I have been here because he tells me it is no more soon, real soon, or quickly. He said, with rapid speed. So with rapid speed, I pray that you guys in there, you men and women that are there, get out of your comfort zone. Get those people out of their comfort zone. Put them in the real zone, the blood zone, the power zone, the Holy Ghost zone, the Word of God zone. Put them in where God's going to deal with them. Did I plan this? No, I've even got the things here that I was going to show you. They don't mean what I thought that God gave me today. There's men and women out there that he's trying to deal with, but you turn it off because you're listening to what men want you to say instead of what God's telling you. Those of you that have the real Holy Ghost, those of you who do not falsely give out prophecies that are of God and not of God, you're lying, and you're going to be held for the false prophets that you give people. I know of a man that gave a false prophecy to a man that plays some drums. If God didn't give him that, but he said God did. I pity that preacher, but I pity that man because he's been lied to because he thinks God's wanting him there instead of where he was getting the truth. Shame, shame on people that do that. Shame on you men and women of God out there. Shame on you that are not teaching your teenagers the true way to God. The true way to heaven is through the manger, through the, through the path that God made, through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost to keep us on that path. Shame on you. Shame on you. Start thinking about Jesus is going to come. Are you going to be left behind? Are your people going to be left behind? Are your children that you think so much of to give them the rock music instead of God music? That music is not of God. That's the beat of the devil. There's a music that they say is of God and it's not. It's a lie. You're not going to see it and hear it in heaven. I pray to God you see it and hear something in heaven that's a whole lot better. Sweet, calm, loving, soothing, pure about the blood of Jesus. Not bling, 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 bling. No, sweet, sweet, kind, loving, pure, holy manifestation of the mouth through the spirit that will say, this is what God wants. I have a place I go that does that. And I get the true meaning of what it is to sing praises unto the Lord and to speak holiness to God and to keep your people away from that unholy music it is nothing but devil. Devils. And you let it in your homes. Some of you go to church and you say you've got the Holy Ghost, but you let the devil play his music through your children because it makes them happy. Well, is it going to make you happy to see them left behind if you make it? They don't. Remember, you're responsible. And I'm telling you this. If I've angered you, I don't mean to. I'm telling you what thus saith the Lord through me. I'm responsible. I take the responsibility before God that this is what he gave me for you. For all of you precious saints of God, washed in the blood, that are just in deceit. Don't be, de don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. I'm telling you today, my whole teaching was going to be totally different. But I will tell you part of it before I close, and I want to pray for you. But this is not where I'm going to, I'm going to leave. But I want to tell you that when I looked in the manger, I was to tell my people the subtopic to what do you see when you look in the manger is do you see divine love, divine salvation, do you see divine faith, do you see divine hope, do you see divine healing, do you see the divine truth, do you see and feel the divine peace, do you have the divine wisdom, do you see it, do you see the divine power of the spirit, do you see the divine grace which Jesus brought us? Or do you see what man says God wants you to think? I saw the divine things of God, and that's what I want you to see. And I'm going to pray for you out there. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray the prayer of those that are sinners. I'm going to pray the prayer of those that want to rededicate their life. Some of you preachers and pastors are out there and teachers. Join me in this prayer. Rededicate your life. Decide this day, I'm going to do what God wants, not what my denomination not what I'm going to feed people to bring them back just to get more money, but I'm going to feed them 
Thus saith the Holy Word of God. Father God, I bring these people before you. Some are dedicating and rededicating. Some are sinners who want to get saved. So, Lord God, I just pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me. I have sinned against you. Forgive me, Father, because I have sinned. I know now that there are things that I haven't done that I needed to do that were not right, that I need to do right. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Forgive me of my not telling the truth to my people. Forgive me of the things that I need. And you people that are out there, forgive me for being a sinner. I want to be one of God's children. I want to be there. I want to be rapture ready. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Forgive my sin. Come into my heart. And I will serve you, Lord. I promise you I will serve you until the rapture or till my death. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to call the Holy Ghost on those because it's going to take that power. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask for an anointing. Slay people if necessary in the spirit right where they are. I call the Holy Ghost upon you. I call the Holy Ghost to power upon you. I call the Holy Ghost upon you. I pray, God, that as you start praising God, give him your voice, and let the Holy Ghost change it. It may be a while, but don't stop. And as the voice changes and you're praising him, let the Holy Ghost have his way. It's wonderful. It's, it's, it's what Jesus said is expedient for him to go to send the Holy Ghost. And he sent us the precious Holy Ghost. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't that scene in the major a little more light on it? Isn't it a little brighter now? It isn't packages. It isn't a Santa Claus with a little round belly. It's a Jesus with the glory of God. I see the glory of God on that path. That's what I see. That's what I want all you people. Please join in helping us to take this to the world. If there's a view that want to help us, help us whatever you can, prayerfully for sure. If you can help financially, it'll be love, but it'll go for the work of the God. I don't take one cent. I never have. I've been in this for years. I have never taken God's money. For anything for my own self, God takes care of me, and I don't need that. I'm not wanting it for me. I don't want to build a mansion. Mine's up there, and I'm going to get there. And I want all of you to know that it's not for me, but if you feel led to do it, be happy to know that you're putting it into where you'll get blessed. God will send it back to you and multiply it. Now then, we've called the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray for the sick. I pray that you get get healed right where you are. The blood of Jesus came. You got healing from from the with his with his blood stripes, you are healed, you were healed. Not maybe. I would see a maybe in it. You are and you were. Father, I bring the sick. I bring them before you. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I call the power of the blood to go into their sicknesses. Go to the very very uh, roots of their sicknesses. I pray God that they're healed by their minds if they're if they're having a problem with thinking. I pray that they get a, a, a keen mind. And I pray that, that, God, you recreate what's been damaged in their head that stops it. There's cells back there. Recreate those cells. In Jesus' name, I pray for the little baby that's been born crippled or sick. I hold the little baby up before you through the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Heal this little child. Heal the baby. Heal grandma and grandpa. Heal mommy and daddy. Heal everybody through the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. What a gift for Christmas. Healing for mind, soul, and body. Isn't he wonderful, children? And I've got to leave you with what I've always leave you with. It takes the blood of Jesus for dying, but it takes the Holy Ghost for flying. See you soon. God bless you. Merry Christmas.